Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tonight's guest is John Cramphorn. He is a former medium and shared his story twice on Revelation TV with the late Doug Harris. John's church also filmed it on YouTube and John wrote a free book that you can download. Hi John, how are you? I'm fine Laura, nice to see you again and speak to you. Nice to speak to you too. It's been a wee while but it's good to good to hear your voice again. Yeah, it's good to catch up, Laura. Absolutely. So, John, could you start off by telling us a little of your family background? Did any of your family go to spiritualist meetings? Um, not to my um, knowledge. I, I, I recall that the, that the mayor sort of gone in um, once or twice just out of curiosity, but they, they never went as a regular um, thing. No, none of my family ever went to a church of any kind. I, I can sort of assure you that we had no um, background in anything to do with anything spiritual at all, no, Laura. Yeah. So how did you begin to get interested? What was it that happened? Right. Um Obviously, it's quite a long story, um, and I need to sort of take you back to my sort of early childhood a little bit, Laura, if I can. Yes. Um, we, I, I grew up in the, the heart of our country, which um, is quite a rough area within the heart of the West Midlands, and I grew up on a, a council estate. And when we was growing up, um, my family went through quite a few difficult sort of um, relationship problems with my mum and dad. Um, and at one point, um, we, we ended up in, in sort of residential sort of children's care. And for anybody who's ever gone into a children's home and been took, took from the, the parents, I can tell you it's a pretty traumatic time. Yeah. Um, and at that time, I, I sort of I was completely off the rails in many ways, um, antisocial. Um, it was a self-survival culture within within the homes. And as a very early age, I felt this presence, this 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 spiritual presence, come close to me, um, and. To be honest, I I started tapping into this spiritual presence because at that particular time, every grown up I'd ever known had probably abused me in some way. I'd gone into into a home, you know what I mean, into foster yeah, care, yeah. Uh, and and sort of rebelled a little bit um, against the establishment. And this spiritual entity came alongside me, mm-hmm. and. I actually started seeing things at a very early age, and I felt this presence sort of speak into situations that actually came true. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was aware of the spiritual dimension from a very, very early age. Um, but obviously I don't want to go into too much detail about my early childhood because that's that's sort of – it is important, but I think that there's other things we need to yeah. um, get – get to a point but I can I can say you know, I was I was at a point in my early childhood where um, I remember very clearly we'd just um, been uh, moved into a uh, foster care uh, in the country and there was a little school there and I watched the tractor playing in the fields for the first time and I was I was totally uh, void of any sort of feelings or emotions with any children. I used to end up fighting me every day. And I just ran off into the woods and I just sat in the woods and in the trees, literally just sat in this tree, literally all, all day long. And I felt this overwhelming presence of a spiritual 
me, which I believe now, knowing what I, what I know, was Jesus. And I felt the peace of peace um, literally just manifest all over me. Uh-huh. And this peace I carried in my heart in literally all my life. And I think it's the, the only thing that stopped me entering to either a prison, any of my, because most of my time, most of my friends ended up in jail or, or other, some kind of, uh, uh, other things, but this, I believe, was the presence of God actually right. come and stilled my my spirit at that very very early age that stopped me always going to the point of of, of not no, non return. So that was an early part of, of my my life. So I, mm-hmm. I did feel and experience something, but I had no religious upbringing whatsoever. Nobody in our house ever went to church. We never the bible christian yeah, yeah. Uh, so. that's that's really beautiful that the presence yeah. of god came so close to you at that young age so what kind of things happened as as you began to to grow up did you pursue this the other presence that you could feel sometimes the kind of a the the, the, the other spiritual being that was with me was yeah. with me from from I can remember it being with me all my life, and it was one of the demons that I, that I used as one of the spirit guides um, when I later becoming a, a medium. So I was aware of it, uh, um, but I, to be honest, I, I blocked a lot of it out um, because it wasn't. I never told anybody because it wasn't the cool thing to do. People yeah. wouldn't believe you. Mm-hmm. Um, any any form of religion in our household at the time when I was growing. Um, when our parents got back together and we, we moved back into, into my parents, it was literally mocked. And Christians was mocked. And, you know, there was classes of weaklings. Um, so, you know, but I did, I, I was aware of this presence. And I was aware of this presence that I could tap into occasionally. That, that, that if I was in trouble, um, it would sort of help. Yeah. And provide um, all of a sudden a name would come into my, into into my into my, my mind, or a or a or a dream type thing. I'd have and I'd know the answer to something, and I know the answer to things before they, they like, like, before it happened. Yeah. Um. So it was like an early sort of. Um, I believe the old devil was trying to lure me into and soften. Um, soften me up to get me into some sort of mediumship at some point, but I'll tell you a little bit about that when I'm when a bit farther in my testimony. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. So, what's the next stage then, John? What What can you share next about that? Right. Um. Like, like, like I can I can tell you that like I I sort of left school and I virtually couldn't read and write, so you can tell. The sort of early sort of background I, I went into, and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you my, the first time I ever went into a church. Um, we were 16, 16 years of age, and there was myself and about four or five other youths, roughly about the same, same age, 16, 17, 18. And it was Christmas Eve, and it was a, an Anglican church in Upper Gornal, where I lived at the time, um, part of the Black Country, and. It was midnight mass on a Christmas Eve, and we actually went in there and took over communion um, just because my mate, mates had dared me. Um, part of that, after that, we actually trashed the church. Mm-hmm. Um, we sort of completely wrecked the service. Um, the trophy for us was literally we made the newspaper, yeah. Headlines, um, Yobbo's trash, uh, uh, midnight mass service. Uh, so that was my first experience with going into church. So like I said, and I want to sort of labour the point, I had I'd never read the Bible, mm-hmm. never went to church, had no Christian teaching whatsoever, but I was a spiritual dimension yeah. out there. So... Um, the next part I will sort of tell you, we, 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 God's got a real sense of humour. Um, I met my wife when she when she sort of was twelve years of age, and we've been married thirty two years. 
and my wife came from a, a really sort of stable family. Yeah. Um, and she could see something in me that I couldn't see in myself, and she would never uh, put me down, never uh, speak down to me or anything. And she, all she kept doing was trying to lift me up and build me up physically, emotionally. And she wanted, we decided to get married. And this was right about about 20, I was about 20. So it was three or four years after the, after the, I trashed the church. The church, church that used to get married in, to be read, was the church that we trashed. Uh-huh. So we had to go for our bands to be read. Yeah. Well, I went once and I, t- I lied to the, uh, the vicar and I told him I was ambulance driver. And I, I had to work Sunday. So that's the first thing I could think mm-hmm. to get out of going to church on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. But as, as it happened, it was the same guy um, that, that that I trashed the church, but I don't believe he recognised me. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, we got married in that church, and that was the second time I ever got ever went in any church mm-hmm. to my to my knowledge, other than maybe a funeral of, of some kind. Yeah, yeah. But uh, from from that, uh, I ended up in, and I wanted to learn really to sort of. I didn't want my kid children growing up not having an education, uh-huh. and so I learned to read and write really quickly. And I was doing a carpentry during the time, and I was trained to be a carpenter, um, and so I learned to read and write. Um, in essence, and my wife was really pushing me to sort of go on. And putting a long story short, I went on and did a teacher training course, um, which I found really, really hard. And this got me into sort of education. Mm-hmm. Well, at that particular time, I'd just done uh, four years at college doing my city and guilds, my advanced city and guilds. I'd done two years doing a teacher training course, and there was no work on the building trades. Mm-hmm. Um, so I saw a job um, uh, in, for social services, working in a day centre, mm-hmm. um, teaching woodwork to people with learning disabilities and people with physical disabilities, have stroke, rehab type stuff. And I just applied for this job um, because there was nothing else out there uh, at the time. The recession was so bad. Yeah. And anyway, cutting a long story short, when I went there, there was two born again Christians who was on fire for the Lord, mm-hmm. and we had some major, major debates um, over Christianity and the uh, God people, young children to 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 see all the chestnuts that you you sort of get, and uh, they I tried to convert them into atheism or become an agnostic because I didn't believe uh-huh. there was a God. Um, but anyway, cutting a long story short, um, I, I, I'd spent sort of a couple of years with them um, and we agreed to disagree, but we used to debate. And the one day this guy challenged me. He said, do, do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal saviour? And I had to say no at that time because that was the truth. Yeah. Um, but I had this this good churning feeling in my spirit mm. that it turned and the next day I was sort of driving to work and I had this overwhelming sense that I had to pray a prayer uh-huh. and I prayed a prayer and I mean this prayer from my heart mm-hmm. I prayed this prayer from my heart and I said to God I said Lord Jesus if you are real if I see you with my eyes, then I will follow you all the days of my life. Mm-hmm. But if I don't see you, then I ain't going to follow you because end of end of deal. But I, I genuinely pray the prayer yeah. um, from my heart. Mm-hmm. And I cut a long story short. Um, the next day, I was attacked and nearly killed. Oh, my goodness. And um, I ended up going, um, I, having nine months off work. I was classed as 30 percent disabled at the time. Um, I had neck injuries. I saw him from a six-foot-four guy, 17, 17 and a half stone, mm-hmm. to somebody who couldn't work. Who'd, I'd all, I, and I mean, I was young. I was confident. Um, I 
got the gift of the gab, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite articulate in many ways. Uh, I used to study martial arts, um, and I could hold my own in a fight, you know what I mean? But to go to somebody who couldn't um, do anything, and I spent nine months off work, and I, I, I sort of went through this journey, this 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 journey of, of how vulnerable we are sometimes as individuals yeah. um, that something can be taken off you so quickly that I, it was a lot of soul searching I've done for my life and and nine months into it and I mean I was feeling sorry for myself in many ways because I used to pass out and lots of things mm-hmm. um, regular uh, and I audibly heard the words it's now time to get well and get better Wow. And I audibly heard those words in my house. Uh-huh. And you know what? Instantaneously, the pain left my neck. The pain left my body. And I'm, within a week, I was back at work. And I, I handed up all my benefits back in. And I went back to work. And it took a few more months to physically, mentally, and psychologically get back up to speed. Uh-huh. But... I, I, I literally went for somebody who was classed by the um, Department of Works and Pensions doctors as 30% disabled to somebody who was back at war with no pains whatsoever, and I've had none to this day. Um, so I believe that was a touch of God. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, that gave me the confidence to then start sort of going into sort of college and university, and I ended up um, becoming a manager of a social services establishment in Warsaw. Mm-hmm. And I beat 15 people to the interview. It was a, something like a technical interview, skills interview, presentation, panel interview. It was lasting about three and a half hours in total. But I'm, I, I beat everybody. Mm-hmm. And unbeknown to me, every single member of that team was actively involved in spiritualism. Oh. So I believe this was something. They were really nice people. Yeah. Really, really nice people. Don't I'm, I'm not knocking any of those those people at all. Those wonderful people. They either went to mediums or saw mediums or or, or at some point been influenced in um, in that. So that's how I first started going into um, getting into the mediums. I I was asked by a couple of members of staff um, to go to a small um, spiritualist church. And I refused several times um, because it, it wasn't my sort of um, my sort of thing. Like I say, my background, nobody went to church and nobody read the Bible, nothing. But anyway, to shut, shut them up, I actually went. And it's the second time in my life that I've actually prayed to God. And I was driving driving to this little church. Mm-hmm. And I just felt this, this inner tug of my spirit asking God, for protection, a God who I didn't really sort of believe in. Yeah. If you know what I mean, it's really weird, but I but I know I did. Anyway, I'll, so I'll, do you feel I'll, that that even though you were going there, somehow you felt it could perhaps be dangerous? So that's why you were asking oh, for his oh, protection. Blimey, oh, blimey! Yeah, something yeah. in my spirit was crying out to me. You need to be be careful. Yeah. But any anyway, I, I actually I actually went. And um, there was a lady called Sarah. She was um, um, one of the sort of main sort of mediums within the church. She was in the vestibule, uh, the entrance of the church way. And um, I went in and we shook hands. And literally, it was like an electric shock was going from me. Yeah. Basically jumped back as well. As our hands touched, it was something supernatural literally touched the both of us. Yeah. And I went to the front of the church where my friends were sitting, and we watched this medium um, for about 20 minutes, you know, do, do whatever. She couldn't look at me. She looked at everybody in the church. She couldn't look at my. And at the end of the service, after they took a couple of hymns and everything, it was very nice, very informal. It was seemed a nice atmosphere. On, you know what I mean? Um, I said to my friends, this is not for me. And once I make my mind up in something, I will tell you, I will follow it through to completion. Mm-hmm. And I made my mind up that that wasn't for me. 
and I, I, I got up and I started walking out, out, out the church down the aisle and Miss Sarah literally stopped me in the aisle. Mm-hmm. She actually physically st- stood in my path, which my, my gut instinct was, if this was a bloke, I'd, I'd literally pick you up and put you out the way because it was quite yeah. a na- uh, way that she actually blocked my entrance uh-huh. to, for me to leave the church. And she said, you're a natural medium, you can't go, you can't go. And I said, it ain't for me. And I made my mind up and I was going, and I was literally just going to push her out the way for me to exit the door. And I saw this, saw this, this, this presence, this spiritual male presence leave her body. And it went through my stomach and out through my head. And like I say, I'm 17 stone, six foot four. I studied martial arts and it knocked me to the floor. Mm-hmm. It was like I was a feather. Yeah. And I couldn't get over this 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 experience. And it was with me. And I knew a, a Church of England vicar who used to come to the, 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 the establishment of work, a guy called Keith. I won't say any more. And I asked him about it. And all he could tell me was, be careful. Uh-huh. Never preach the gospel or anything or warn me. Mm-hmm. Just be careful. So anyway, I, I, I had a couple of weeks later, I had a vivid dream. I was woken up in the middle of the night, and um, I saw this man, this black man called Mac, in my in, in my in my dream. Simultaneous, Mac had had a dream, and 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 he, he saw me, and um, um, we we sort of met. Um, at the same little church, and and he sort of shared things with me, which clearly sort of drawed me into the old spiritual medium process. And I, I actually started going to the church, um, spiritualism church, and I, I started sitting in circle. Um, and I, I one of one of the times we were sitting in circle was nine eleven. Uh-huh. Um, when the tw- twin towers and the, the the planes crashed, and we're sitting in church, and I had actually out of body experience there, but I was actually astral projected out of my body uh-huh. to the uh, twin towers site, and what I saw was um, the twin towers as if it was like in a black and white photograph type yeah. uh, thing, and there was this crystal. Um, wall literally completely round the the site and if you read the 23rd psalm as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil for thou art with me mm-hmm. it was like God had put this supernatural crystal screen impenetrable round this site and what I saw was angels angelic beings taking the departed souls up to be with God that was taking them up to be with to heaven, those who are born again Christians up to, up to heaven. Uh-huh. But behind me, in this side of the, the the side that I was standing, I was surrounded by um, the presence of evil that I've never experienced in my life. It was so horrendous. Um, but I got three guides with me, three spirit guides with me. Uh-huh. It was later to be the guides that I used when I was yeah, involved in medium, um, and they was the ones I allowed into my body. Um, when my voice used to change, my features used to change, and those were the three that was actually in me um, when I was um, doing the mediumship. Um, so that's where I was up to that point. Um, and I was going on um, uh, in mediumship. Um, I was reading books, I was meditating, I was astral projecting. Um, I was you know, all the chakra points. I had uh, out of body experiences where I saw crystal mountains. All the, all the things that you can you can think. I, I had out. I had those type of experience. Yeah. But the one day, um, the one day I had this. Um, I was sitting this, this sort of um, a late summer summer's maybe early Octoberish, you know, it wasn't long after the after the, the, the Twin Towers. Um but it was a beautiful sort of um afternoon, early early evening. Um and I was sitting in the house, I was in my in, in my house and um 
I had this out of body experience that I that I, I didn't enter into meditation. I didn't do anything. Um, I just sat, sat and I had this out of body experience, and I saw. Um, I knew I was in the presence of God Almighty, the God who created the heavens and earth. I knew absolutely everything in my spirit told me I was in the presence of God. And it was it was behind the cloud. I couldn't see him, but I knew I was in the presence of God. In my mind, my soul knew that I was in the presence of God. And I also saw sorry, I also saw the devil. Yeah. And when I saw the devil, um he um he, he was, and I'm not in, into sort of, man, I'm, I'm happily married, but he was one of the most beautiful creatures I have ever seen in my entire life. Mm-hmm. His beauty was beyond uh, expression, and he was what every man would ever aspire to want to look like. Mm-hmm. And he was down, down, down. He wasn't in hell. There was no- I was on the earth, but I could see into the spiritual dimension that was yeah. being shown me. And the devil literally took me to the east, to the pyramids and to the west, and and he offered me fame, fortune, um, book deals. I'd been international medium. He would fast track me. The, 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 the trappings of this world, everything would be mine, oh, but goodness. I'd be selling my soul to the devil. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And... I just knew that I couldn't do that. And I said, I said no. And then I audibly heard the words, he said no, which is the title of my free book. Of your book. And yeah. God, God said, he said no. Mm-hmm. And he instantaneously changed into this creature of absolute evil. He changed it. My eyes never been so scared in all my life. Yeah. Turned and he was evil. I mean, I'm I'm six, six or four, seventeen stone. So he kicked me up in the air and I broke two ribs. I um, mean, he attacked me. Mm-hmm. And luckily, God God protected me and stopped him from from taking me out. And um, I felt I've never I felt all of a sudden my, my spirit literally being brought into my body mm-hmm. and you know all the the, uh, the, the shanker points then portals basically to allow demons and that was sealed up and I felt I felt that sealing up um, see my spirit going back into me but I'd still got these three demons in me mm-hmm. and over the next week um, I went to a local uh, Anglican church and I literally got on my knees I had no understanding of Jesus but I got on my knees and I prayed to Jesus. And, and over the week, each one of these demons actually was taken out of me. Uh, the alarms was going off in the street. Stuff was moving mm-hmm. around my house. Um, I got bite marks all over my body, scratch marks all over my body. I was coughing in blood. Yeah. But literally, after the, after the three had came out, it was like God had sort of sealed me up so they couldn't get back in. Yeah. Um, I got to that point in my life, and I mean, I was so, I was, I was absolutely drained. I'd had no sleep for a week. I wasn't eating. Um, I was mentally, physically at my lowest point I'd, I'd ever been in my in my life. Mm-hmm. And I started going to a church, and this woman there, she gave me a book called Praying the Jesus Prayer. And I started, and it was written by a Franciscan monk, Glasshampton Abbey. And it's a simple prayer, but it's 2,000 years old. It says, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I started praying that prayer, and that prayer, Lord, saved my life. That prayer saved my life. But had I been become born again then, no, I hadn't. I, I, I started going to church, and I approach this religion as I'd approach spiritualism. I, I was reading stuff on it and trying, and it was all head knowledge. It was it was very legalistic. I was approaching it, uh-huh. and and but I was still under demonic attack, and I couldn't understand. And it was just a nightmare. And I'm moving 
I'm fast tracking because I know obviously we've only got half an hour uh, talk, Laura. Yeah. Um, but I, but cutting a long story short, uh, about sort of three to four months after these demons had came out of me, um, I was approaching uh, a little gospel church essentially uh-huh. where I live now, and I passed that church ten thousand times, and I, I just I was with my wife, um, and I felt ill, and I said to my wife, I've got to go back home. And she carried on up to our little shopping, our little village where, where she went and got the shopping and or whatever she did. And I came back and I literally came parallel with the church and I just got this, it was like a, a magnet to steal. I had to cross over to the to, to this church. Uh-huh. And as I crossed over, crossed over the road, I looked up and there was a rusty old cross outside, a steel rusty old cross. And under the, under the, under the, the, the cross was a poster. And I believe it was John 3.16, for God's all of the world. And I kept reading these words, looking up at the cross, and I kept reading and looking up at the cross, and I kept reading. And it was like the penny suddenly dropped, Laura. Yeah, the, the penny suddenly dropped. Mm-hmm. And instantaneously, as the penny dropped, the prayer that I'd said several years previous, when I, just before the day that I was attacked, I said, Lord, if, if you're real, Jesus, you show up. As Paul's on the road to Damascus, I actually stood in the presence of the living God, the creator of the heavens and earth. I stood in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, Laura, I knew he was speaking to me, spirit to spirit. He knew everything about me. He knew absolutely everything. And I tell you now, Laura, he had walked every step of the way with me. Every part of that journey, he had walked with me. And he didn't condemn me. There wasn't, he just loved, love emanated from, from, from Jesus. And that love, it was just like emanating. And the more I just felt his spirit, the more the love just emanated. And it was like emanating all over me. And he, I, I, his eyes, I looked into his eyes. And the love and the peace, the shalom peace that he carried, you know, I tapped into that, Laura. I tapped into that. Uh-huh. And, and, and I, from that day since... I've been a born again Christian, mm-hmm. and I, I was baptized in water uh, on the twenty first of May, um, shortly after, and um, I was filled with the Holy Spirit in spoken tongues. Kisha mama masika re da da da, and the Lord has been with me now um, since two thousand and one. Mm-hmm. And I've had him with me every single day. And I'll t- testify to the miracles he's done in my life, the blessings that he's done in my life. Has it been easy? No, because what he's called me to do is he's called me to work with within the field of deliverance, within people mm-hmm. who are oppressed. Um and influences, and that's my calling. Uh, is it a spiritual battle winning? Yes, it is very much so. But I do know the truth, and the truth has set me free. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man will come unto the Father except through Jesus. And and if I've got one thing to say, is that I look at my brothers and sisters. Um, because every single human being, because our, work, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. And, and my brothers and sisters who went into the spiritualist church, they are good people. They are genuine people. But I absolutely believe they are being deceived. And I, I, I send out this prayer to them that they will actually test the Spirit of God. As I called upon Jesus, as I tested him, I called out, if you are real, show yourself. And he manifested himself in the, in the only way that I'll come to know. And I'll put that out to, to any single person. That our God is big enough to be challenged. And if you pray, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. And he will find you, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will be with you. It will guard you. It will, 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 the peace of God will be with you, and it's in you. And um, I'll tell you what, since I've been a Christian, I've been so blessed. My family have all become born-again Christians. 
Um, my neighbours have been born again Christians. Friends that used to be into spiritualism have become born again Christians. We we can't all be wrong. That God transforms lives. Yeah. He transforms lives. And what used to be important to me years ago, no longer important to me. I've got a I've got a life now which is so abundant, so blessed. And I tell you what, I'm just so happy to be a follower of Jesus. That's absolutely beautiful, John. Amen. Um, Amen. Thank you. And so much of what you said I relate to myself and you know, you mentioned earlier about spiritualists and mediums are, are kind and lovely people and mm. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, I love them and I don't have anything against them in any way because they genuinely are trying to help people. But like you say, um, we discovered that these so called spirit guides and so called dead family sadly were actually demons in disguise and, and so a lot of them don't know that they're being they're being deceived by them and as you said test the spirits you know mm-hmm. if a spirit guide turns up or or someone's at a seance and they see dead uncle john you know test it test it in jesus name show me your true identity in jesus name yeah. and usually what happens is that the, the demon shows its true colours and it screams and then you realise it wasn't a spirit guide or it wasn't your dead relative. Um, And that's something you went through, obviously, when you met Satan. It's something I went through. So, yeah, it's... And it is a shock when you first discover that your so-called spirit guides can actually become violent and turn on you. Um, So it, it does take a, a while to for that all to filter through, but I really hope that some spiritualists are listening tonight, John. Amen. I agree. Amen. And could could you finish off, John, by telling us where people can watch your your video or read your testimony? Yes, no, yeah, you can uh, obviously get it from Laura's site. Um, there's a free download there. You can also get it from YouTube if you put John Crampo on YouTube or Dudley Community Church. You can put that um, that, that address, or you can email me and um, I'll I'll sort of forward you that. No problem at all. But if you go, if you Google John Crampo, C R A M P H O R N, all the links are there. But do find a local church and, and test test it out for yourself because Jesus uh, will reveal himself to you and he, he will set you free because he is a true living saviour. Amen. I totally just want to say amen to that. And, and also John's testimony is on reachouttrust.org under the occult spiritualism section. So, John, could you please pray for listeners now just before we close oh lord heavenly father thank you thank you for your word and your truth lord i pray lord heavenly father that every single person that hears this uh the radio broadcast lord will uh test out test out what's being said lord test out everything that you see go to the bible read it for yourself and i just pray in the name of jesus christ that the blessed holy spirit will just open your ears open your heart to receive um part of this testimony lord i pray that you will just watch over every single person who hears this lord and i pray that you'll open their hearts and their minds Lord, to test in the name of Jesus. I pray your blessing on Laura and on this radio station in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, John. You're welcome, Laura. And I hope you were all encouraged by what John had to share tonight. And thank you for listening. Please tune in next time for another powerful testimony of Christ's transforming love and power. God bless you. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world. Online, on tablet, on smartphone and on TV. 
If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.